Father in heaven, grant us your Holy Spirit. Upon us, your Holy Spirit pour. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I almost want to say happy Sabbath. Every day it's been like we've had an extra sense of his presence. Amen. I know that the day has been full so that you are ready to go home. You're not ready yet? You want some more? Are you sure? Amen. In the book of Hebrews chapter 11, in some ways, I'm at both a disadvantage and an advantage. The disadvantage is that we don't have enough time to study what we need to study tonight. The advantage is we're still going to study something about it. <laughs> I believe that the time demands that we understand what we're going to talk about tonight. You see, it's one thing to be able to point to the prophetic problem, but it's a totally different thing to point to the prophetic solution. Amen? And tonight, what we're going to be talking about is actually the solution to the revolution. And we have it. Seventh-day Adventists have the solution. The problem is we don't know what we have. We have been robbed and don't even know it. We have to plead God that he does something special for us. And I'm praying for me because this should take at least three or four days to share with you what I'm going to share with you. But I don't have three or four days. Amen? I believe that there's a great work that must be accomplished in a little time. And I believe that we have just a program that is out. I was going to allow that to happen. You know, as I began to preach and study about this thing, and I knew that, that we're in the final generation, I pleaded, Lord, there's something that has to be done now, something now, dear God. And God opened up the blueprint of his plan. You see, the work that God has us to do always has a blueprint. In the book of Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 11, and when you get there, if you'll let me know by saying amen. Father, anoint your words as we have opened it in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 7 says, By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things, what's the next words? Not seen as yet. So what was this, history or prophecy? Something had not happened yet, but he was warned about it like this revolution. Then the Bible says, he moved with fear. He didn't stay sitting or in his seat. The Bible says he moved. He didn't stay in the city, he moved. He didn't stay doing nothing, he moved. He moved with fear and prepared an ark, what for? To the saving of his house. Was his house saved, yes or no? How many in Noah's family were saved? Everyone. That's the point. I'm not thinking of the number now. I'm thinking of the experience now. Listen to me. There's some experiences in the Bible where the men of God, they lost families. You know that, don't you? We think of Lot. And in that wicked city, Lot lost his wife and his children. And only he himself was saved. Someone said, well, I thought the children made it out, but, but you, they didn't really make it out, did they? And the Bible doesn't record that there were three souls vexed in, in, in Sodom. It says there was righteous Lot, one soul vexed. Only one person made it out that was acknowledged by heaven. He lost his family, even though he was saved. Now, my brothers and sisters, you can think of in the, in the reverse. I mean, think of the wife, the, the wife who became David's wife, Abigail. Do you remember who her husband was before? Why, well, he was a fool. Am I right? That's what his name meant. When he heard of what David was getting ready to do, he, he fell and died himself. He was so afraid. He was lost. You can think of times when children have been saved and parents lost. 
and parents saved and children lost, but very few times in the Bible do you see where the whole family were saved. Husband and father, wife and mother, brother and sister, all saved. But that's what Noah had. Is that right? Now, I don't know about you, but that's what I want. I want to be able to go through the crisis and to be able to be able to look at my daughter and see that she's saved. To be able to look at my wife and see that she's saved. To be able to look at my extended family, father and mother and brother and sister and, and those who have joined this movement, I want to be able to look and see that everyone is saved that are upon, under the influence of our family. But my brothers and sisters, that means that we have to do just what Noah did. He moved with fear. He prepared an ark. I believe there's another ark to build. What do you say? And I don't believe that we have much time to do it. And I believe that we need to figure out a plan or find out the plan rather that is going to allow us to accomplish a great work in a little time before it is written that there is such a plan. Do you want the plan? I wonder. What are we studying? What are we studying? Redemption. Have we studied something about that? What else are we studying? Revolution. Have we studied something about that? But oh, oh, bless his holy name. The relief work. Have we studied that? Well, we have. You just didn't know it. <laughs> but we're going to know it today by the grace of God. You see, because I believe that the only solution in this last hour that you can go home, you can begin this tonight. You may not can get out of the city tonight, but you can do the relief work tonight. Today. It's the first step in starting the outpost. It's the first step in restoring your home. It's the first step in bringing revival and reformation to the Seventh Adventist Church. It's the first step in providing a group that can evangelize the world. I say, what is the relief work? It is our plan tonight to spell out just a little briefly as we can, but as comprehensive as we can, something about this plan. We want to know the background. We want to know what it means and what it represents. I believe that time is short. Yes, that's the relief work. Let's continue. Now, I, I want to start off by saying this. No, that's not the right place. It looks like they took us back to the very beginning I don't happen to remember the number of that slide. Uh, go down to where you will see probably, probably around the 90s, uh, where you'll get ready to see, uh, you'll see that same relief work. Go back up some, would you show me? Go to where you can view it right there. You see where? Yes. Bring me down. Largely come down here and bring me down. Okay. Slow me down. Now go back up. Go back up. Come back down. We want to go further down in our numbers. You keep on. You got a lot of ground to cover. Keep going. Slow down. Yeah, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming. Come on now, come on. So you missed a lot, didn't you? <laughs> keep coming. It's not slow down. Keep coming, keep coming. experience 
I believe this is our biggest problem. Before we really even get deep into our study, I want to tell you the biggest problem, so if we run out of time, you got the main point. Amen? Desire of 672. Father, bless these words again. Take full control. Be with our time. Be with my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. It says, Christ has what? Promised the gift of the Holy Spirit to his church. It's the, the, the rain. And the promise belongs to us as much as to the first disciples. But like every other promise, it is given on what? Conditions. Every promise of God has a condition. Why don't we receive the early rain or the latter rain? There are conditions. Let's read this together. All together, what does it say? There are, this is the desire of ages, 672. There are many who believe and profess to claim the Lord's promise. They talk about Christ and about the Holy Spirit, yet receive no what? Do you just want to talk and get no benefit? How can we talk his name and get no benefit or talk about the Holy Spirit and get no benefit? What's the problem? There's some conditions. What is the problem? They do not what? Surrender the soul to be guided and controlled by divine agencies. We cannot use the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is to what? You know what our biggest problem is? We want to control God instead of letting God control us. And this is the reason we don't receive the Holy Spirit. It says, Through the Spirit, God works in His people to will and to do His good pleasure, Philippians 2.13. But many will not what? Submit to this. The next sentence says, They want to do what? They want to manage themselves. What does it mean to manage something? Well, we control it. You tell the person to do this, they do it. It says, they want to manage themselves. This is why they do not receive the what? So why don't we have the Holy Spirit? Because we want to manage what? Ourselves. You say, what do you mean? Well, when we want to dress the way we want, even though God told us how to dress, then we want to manage what? Ourselves. If God says don't put nothing on your ears or nothing around your neck, or if God says don't put that in your stomach, and you say, well, I know what God says, but I want to do it my way, then that just tells us we want to manage ourselves. And the problem is not so much just diet and dress. The problem is when we want to control the Holy Spirit, then God can't control us. And it doesn't matter what the issue is, whether it's music, whether it's education, whether it's health, whether it's relationships, whether it's money. You say, well, I want to marry this person no matter what God says. Well, that just means that you're getting ready to let the devil marry you. We cannot manage God. We must allow God to manage us. And I think he does a good job. What do you say? It would almost be laughable if it wasn't so tragic to see how many people think they can manage themselves and they're doing such a poor job with it. We're trying to manage marriages and they're getting ready to be divorced. We're trying to manage children and they, they're rebellious as, as the devil himself. We're trying to manage ourselves as young people and we're doing just a poor job with it. But there's a manager that wants to give us something better and his name is Jesus. I want him to manage me. What do you say? Now, if we can make that decision tonight that says no matter what it is, whether it's in diet, whether it's in dress, whether it's in education, whether it's in my home, no matter what it is in my life, I want you to manage me from now on, from your Bible and through the spirit of prophecy, do you know that we will be in condition, in the position to receive the latter rain? Do you want it? Well, let me tell you something. We don't have long to get into that position. A revolution is coming. Do you not see what's going on in the world? What was just taking place in Baltimore? Riot. Unrest. Bloodshed. Revolution. Now all of these are just little tin pits when you look at wa Occupy Wall Street. It's like little waves. You ever been on the beach and the wave comes in, rolls in, and if you've ever seen a tsunami or know about a tsunami, you understand that a tsunami is very deceptive. When a tsunami comes, it almost looks like it's going to be a perfect day. It looks as if the, the, the waves on the beach are receding back. 
and people foolishly go in deeper and don't recognize that over a 40 foot 50 block is getting ready to come crashing down and there's no way to escape I'm telling you a tsunami is coming prophetically and unless we understand the solution to the revolution we're not going through I want to know what do you say and if we know we can go through like that art did and we can take somebody else through our whole families what do you say do you know that our children at the age of 12 should know the solution should be able to be dropped off at the White House or the United Nations and do this but it starts right here cars turn over killing stealing the police killing innocent babies boys boys killing other boys the danger is going everywhere you go you see riot and revolution getting ready to break out now here's a book uh, a Harvard professor wrote called Colossus if you were here last year when we finished Sunday we talked about this book it says the rise and fall of the American what very famous very famous uh, historian looked upon have bestsellers in the world and he wrote a book about America you know what he said now first I want you to read what the prophet says the present is a time of overwhelming interest to all living rulers and statesmen many who occupy positions of trust and authority what's the next word thinking men and women of all classes have their attentions fixed upon the events taking place where they are watching this strange restless relations that exist among the nations they observe the intensity that is taking possession of every earthly element and they recognize that something great and what decisive is about to take place that the world is on the verge of a stupendous what this is the revolution that's going to turn to persecution they see it but they don't understand where it's all headed and in this book he begins to talk about America and says that when you go through the crisis he says that if you study history he's gone through all the nations he said once a nation reaches its peak that it normally has between 10 and 20 years he wrote it in the LA uh, brother Bridges in the LA column he wrote it he said about 10 to 20 years until all of it reaches its limit that's amazing you know what he said and then he said but America reached her apex and he says 2000 so then he said that America is on a ticking time bomb so if he said a decade or two where does that take us the man said we have possibly anywhere between 2010 and 2020 before this crisis began to break down just looking at the history all over the nations and my brother and sister is interesting that what he's saying is lying up with everything else in the Bible history of prophecy now my brothers and sisters this lets us know that if ever there was a time to get ready the time is what you know the prophet says she says that sometimes historians in great controversy write what the very prophet the writings of the prophets say and they themselves don't even know it that the nation cannot exist much longer did you see what animation showed us this morning the church can't exist much longer you know the nation can't and i believe that what joseph was in egypt every seven day Adventist is to be to the world you believe that what did joseph do in egypt talk to me somebody what did joseph do in egypt did he, did, did he prophesy of a coming time of trouble? Did he talk about an economic collapse? Yes, he did. Did he talk about a crisis? Yes or no? But is that all he did? No. While he pointed out the prophetic problem, he also brought to view the practical prophetic solution. Am I right? Did he have a solution? And as a result, he became not the condemner of Egypt, but the savior of Egypt becoming a type of Jesus and a type of us that is going to be in the last days what God wants what Joseph was in Egypt every seven Adventists to be to the world it's time brothers and sisters what do you say this world is getting ready to collapse and we don't have much time do you want to get ready let's jump on our, let's uh, kneel on our knees and pray so that we can get ready and go through this because the prophet has told us repeatedly that this solution needs to be in place today would you kneel with me right now as we approach the Lord in prayer?
Father, I am too eager, ignorant to do what needs to be done tonight. Please give me your wisdom. Grant me your spirit. Give us the ability to comprehend. Even though we've had a full day, give us the ability to be alert and wide awake. Let talking mouths be hushed. Let wanderers outside be drawn in. Let hearts in this room be convicted and converted that we might be saved. And not only us, but that we might be what Joseph was in Egypt, a savior to the world to represent Jesus. Please, Lord. Please, Lord. Help us today. Help us tonight. Open our eyes that we may see. Grant us the Holy Spirit. Hold up the time that we may understand. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. The prophet tells us what the solution is. I'm going to start off with the solution before we even study. Repeatedly, the prophet tells us what the solution is. In Country Living, page 31, the prophet says these words. Would you read it with me, please? It says what? Now, we're not going to preach. I want to have a, almost an informal conversation with you. Amen? Amen? I want to talk to you and talk to me. We need to know what the solution is. What do you say? Amen. Together. It says, repeatedly, the Lord has what? instructed us now if it says repeatedly what does it mean over and over and over repeatedly the Lord has instructed us that we are to work the cities from what outpost centers in these cities we're to have what so our churches are to be where in the city churches in the city as memorials for God but what institutions for the publication of our, what is that? Publishing houses. For the healing of the sick, what's that? Sanitariums. And for the training of workers, what's that? Schools, evangelistic training centers. Practically and evangelistically, in other words, industrially and spiritually, are to be established where? Outside the cities, hence the name Outpost. Outside the cities, especially, is it important that our youth be shielded from the temptations of what? So if we leave our young people in the city, it's going to make it almost impossible for them to stand in these last days. I almost feel sad for some of our young people when I look at what we do to them, and then we get mad at them. We give them the television and the iPad. We give them the phones and the mini phones. We give them everything that the devil has to offer, and then wonder when the devil has them. Why, don't get mad at them. Get mad at yourself. Now, I hate that to say this about us, but it's true. Am I right? But God is merciful to us. There's a plan of redemption. He has a relief work for us. Praise God. Now, it says that the solution is an outpost repeatedly. Now, I let it repeat. Amen? Because God told us this how? Repeatedly. Out. Post centers, and you'll find out today, I'll just add this in there quickly, that right now more and more outpost centers by name are popping up today. You know, we're always told that the counterfeit will come before the genuine. And what you have to do is, and I'm going to have some handouts, I'm going to get you at the end. What you have to do is find out what did God say would bring the outpost into existence, and if that was not done, then no, you don't have the real thing. Because God has a way to start it, Amen. Do you want to follow the plan? Yes. Let's go forward. Now, my brothers and sisters, as we look back at this crisis, we ended last night by showing us that, and interesting, let me bring this up first. It says, we're talking about the history of our message, going through this. It says, we must understand, I'm going to pass through that. This says, going through this, I'm going to pass through this right now. I want to go through that right now. Pass through this. I, just talking about the history of our work. But we found out last night. That the last condition before the son in law would be represented by the Bible as a bottomless, what that bottomless pit represent? The condition of chaos. Anarchy represents the earth in a state of confusion. We looked at the Bible, we, we proved it from the Bible. Number one, it was the condition of the what? That's the last state. But before the condition of the earth becomes a bottomless pit, there's a condition on the earth. This is the condition of the earth and its social structure. So there's a social bottomless pit, and then there's a structural bottomless pit. Are you with me? 
The earth without orders, when the mountains broken down, the cities fall, there's nothing left, and Jesus says, leaves it there for a thousand years. The earth is about in this pit, but before that, just before that, the social condition of the earth will become about in this pit, just like it was in France. Am I right? This expression of spirit represents the earth in a condition of state of confusion and chaos, darkness, desolation, first on a social structure, finally on a physical structure. And this must happen near the 6,000 year. Am I right or wrong? Physical structure, 6,000. Just before that, the social structure. We prove this. Anarchy, revolution. Now, what did the Bible call the revolution that was going on in France? How did the Bible symbolize the condition on earth of revolution? Revelation 11, 7, 8 says that in France there was a bottomless pit. This was this condition of revolution. Is this coming to America, yes or no? Yes. Is it coming worldwide, yes or no? Yes. Who is going to be blamed for the revolution? Seventh-day Adventists. They're going to be blamed for bringing, it says, those who honor the Bible Sabbath will be denounced as enemies of what? Law and order. We proved that from the Bible last night. It says, and as breaking down the moral restraints of what? That's the social condition. Causing what? Anarchy and what? That is revolution. That is revolt. And we see that this is brewing right now. It's developing in every one of our major cities. And very soon, it will be unsafe to live in these cities. Right now, it's already unsafe. But very soon, your very death will take place if you walk these streets. Riot. Unrest. Bloodshed. Now watch. Let's read this. Desire of 759. God could have destroyed Satan and his sympathizers as easy as one can cast a pebble to the what? Can you imagine? Jesus could have just thrown Satan out of heaven just like that. But he did not do this. Rebellion was not to be overcome by force. Compelling power was found only under Satan's government. The Lord's principles are not of this order. His authority rests upon goodness, mercy, and love, and the presentation of these what? So first we must present what? Principles is the means to be used. God's government is moral and truth and love are to be the prevailing what? Does God force us to do right? Will he force us to change what we eat? Will he force us to change our dress? No, he gives us a choice. Now if we don't choose it, we choose death. But he gives us a choice. He doesn't force. God gives us love and choice, not fear or force. Are you with me? Let's continue. Now watch now. Desire of 879. Watch now. Why? 6,000 years. Why 6,000 years? This is the answer. It was God's what? Never forget that. God's purpose is no, no haste or no. It's all on that great clock of time. In the third angel's message, God has a purpose in preparing the people to stand for that last phase of the investigator judgment. There's a purpose. Always follow the purpose. Our success from the first night is fidelity to the creator's purpose. It says it was God's purpose to place things on the eternal basis of security and in the councils of what? Heaven. It was decided that what? Do you know that God created time to do a demonstration? Time didn't exist before. But it says in the council of heaven it was decided. Remember we were in eternity in the past. Eternity doesn't have time. But when sin came in eternity now moved into time. It says that God decided that time must be what? Given. Why? For Satan to develop the... So Satan has some principles. Amen? There are two antagonistic principles. Struggling for supremacy. And the student of the Bible should understand this. It says, Satan to develop... He gave him time to develop the principles which were the foundation of his system of what? He, that is the devil, had claimed that these were what? What did he say was superior? His principles of living or government were superior to God's what? So the battle is between God, the person, and his principles. It's between the person and his what? Principles. So the devil person has some principles, and God person has some principles, and the great controversy is to reveal which one is better. Amen. See, when you dress the way you do, or eat the way you do, or live the way you do, or get married the way you do, you are testifying to one or the other of these two principles. Every phase of life. Amen. Now, my brothers and sisters, I want to see if you're following this. I want to see if you've been good students. Now, I didn't tell you, but I'm, I have faith in you. Amen? Amen? I have faith in you. This reason says, speak faith. <laughs> All right? So now I'm going to ask this. What do you think is the full and final display of the principles of Satan? 
because their principles, time is given for him to reveal his principles. What do you think is the full and final display of the principles of Satan's kingdom? So I heard somebody say, well, I heard somebody say, who said that? Thank you, sister. Revolution is actually the outwork of Satan's principles. The bottomless pit is actually the full and final display of what would have happened if Satan had complete control of the universe. Hell on earth. What do you think is the full and final display of the principles of God to show its superiority? I already told you. Repeatedly I told you. Repeatedly I told you. Out post sinners. And at the end of 6,000 years, these principles must be put into practice. And when you practice the principles of heaven, you get an outpost. When you practice the principles of the devil, you get the bottomless pit. And the world is going to be able to make a decision. When that sign law is passed, we're going to see a polarization of both of the full and final display of the love of God and of the, and of the principles of Satan. And the world is going to say, I don't want that bottomless pit. <laughs> That's going to create the loud cry. Now, so the bottomless pit and the outpost sinners. This development of his principles of the bottomless pit, this development of God's, of God's principles, our post sinners, it is going to show what's superior. The bottomless pit, there is no bottom to it. It keeps going down and down and down, but the outpost keeps going up and up and up. When you look for the Adventist world, you, had, you couldn't look down. You had to look up a little higher. <laughs> they were traveling on a path far above the world. That's where we should be traveling. Our principles should be as high as heaven so that when the atheist or the worldling looks at our homes, at our families, at our lives, they see even the heathen, the superiority of the people who practice the principles from the person Jesus Christ. But Satan is seeking to hinder this work. Revelation 12, 17 says, now I'm just talking to you now. I'm, we're talking and studying. Is that all right? Revelation 12, 17 says, and the dragon was wrath with the woman. Went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Where's that in the Bible? Revelation what? 12, 17. How's he going to try to hinder this? Ministry of healing, 364. Don't forget that. Through the working of what? Trust. And the results of labor unions and strikes, the conditions of life in the city are constantly becoming more and more what? Difficult. Serious troubles are before us. What's the trouble? Revolution. It's going to turn into what? Persecution at the Sunday law. It says, and for many families removed from the cities will become a necessity. The trade unions and confederacies is going to bring these conditions. It says, because of these unions and confederacies, it will soon be very difficult for our institutions to do what? So when the revolution is going on, can our institutions safely do the work if they are in the city? No. What happened to Walmart when it was in the city? Our institutions, in order to be able to do the work when the sun laws passed, during the revolution, during the bottomless pit, we have to be in outpost centers. Are you with me? Now watch this now. The time is fast coming when the controlling power of the labor unions will be very oppressive. Again and again, the Lord has instructed our people to take their families away from the cities into the country where they can raise their own provisions. Why? For in the future, the problem of buying and selling will be a very what? Serious problem. We should now begin, we're told, to heed this instruction. So what should we do? For years, I have been given what? Not light, but what? Not just light, but what? Special light that we are not to do what? Center our work in the cities. So if we're not to center our work in the cities, then we're to center our work where? Out of the cities. And we will call that then a what? Outpost center. So when we finish the work, are we going to do it from in the city or are we going to finish the work from out of the city? So then the devil says if they never get into outposts, they can never finish the work. Even if we know these principles, we can't finish the work unless we get an outpost. Someone must practice the principles in order to show the superiority. Now it says, what's going to happen? The turmoil and confusion or the bottomless pit. Fill the cities, the conditions brought about by what? Labor unions and what else? Strikes will prove a great what? 
hindrance to our work. That means the devil is trying to stop the work from being finished. He says, I almost 6,000 years is almost here. If I can stop them with the revolution, then 6,000 years can come and my head will never be crushed. He's trying to stop everything he can and stop you from finishing his work. And he's come up with a plan. If I just get them not to understand these principles, I've got them. Let's continue. Is a revolution almost here? Yes or no? Did we show you that last night? Here this billionaire told us. The world knows it's coming. He said, Canadian billionaire, he said, predicts the end of the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency. He says the transition out of the U.S. dollar will become quite what? Ugly. What do you mean ugly? Revolution. Riot. Unrest. What else? Bloodshed. Now, let's continue. We see this happen again and again. Social mess coming as a result of this. Inspiration tells us this. The reality is they're so far in the debt that they don't, they don't even own the termite holes in their houses. Unfortunately, there are awful lot of people like them when the economy goes into what? As it will never be to do, America is going to have a serious what? That is the bottomless pit. That's the social condition of anarchy, revolution. It's getting ready to take place. When will this happen? Talk to me, somebody. When will this happen? What is the issue that is going to create riot, unrest, bloodshed? What condition? There's a cause, and the revolution is not a cause. The revolution is an effect. But we're to study from what? Cause to effect. Because the Bible says in Proverbs 26, 2, that the curse causeless shall not come. There is a cause. Now, let's read it. Education, page 228. At the same time, there's that word again. What? What is that? That's without law and order. That's revolution. Anarchy is seeking to sweep away, sweep away all law, not only divine, meaning God's law swept away, but also what? So this anarchy wants to sweep away both God's law and man's law, and this is a bottomless pit, no foundation. The law is the foundation of God's government. No law, no foundation. Now, it says the centralizing of what? Wait a minute now. Whoa, 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 whoa. How in the world did it move so quickly from talking about this anarchy and revolution and then moments later start talking about money unless there's a relationship between what? The centralizing of money and the revolution. Am I right? The centralizing of wealth and power. This is the cause. The vast combinations for the enriching of the what? That's the few people coming together. That's the centralizing, the money makers. At the expense of the what? Now, I wish we had time to go through all the texts. We have the series out there that does that, and some of you have seen on YouTube, so I won't take the time to do that. But it says, the combinations of the what? Poor classes. Now, which one is more, the rich or the poor? What do you think the makeup in America is, and, and verily the world is, on that makeup between rich and poor? What do you think the makeup is? 99 to 1. That's the same in America, the same worldwide. Do you think it's getting ready to be a terrible revolution, yes or no? Yeah. It says, the combination of the poor class with the offense of their interests and claims, the spirit of what? Unrest, of riot, and bloodshed, the worldwide. Is it going to be worldwide, yes or no? The worldwide dissemination of the same teachings that led to the French Revolution. All attending to involve the whole world in a sorrow similar to that which convulsed France. So what happened in France, the revolution? We're going to see it happen not only in America, but worldwide. And my brothers and sisters, if you ever study a revolution, you know that it is bloody. There has not been a bloodless revolution. You look at the American revolution, bloody. Children lost their lives. Sister White said, when she started talking about the Civil War and, and almost a revolution in stealing, she said there are some in this church that are going to lose loved ones in that Civil War. Revolutions have always been bloody. What about, brothers and sisters, the Russian Revolution? Bloody. The Chinese Revolution? Bloody. The Asian Revolution? Bloody. But what about nothing was as bloody as the French Revolution? Have you ever studied the French Revolution? We're told that people's heads rolled off in the streets. They were grabbed. They walked out their door, grabbed, put on the head. Guillotines come chopping down children and adults if they weren't involved in the revolution. And we're told that a struggle more similar than that which happened to France is getting ready to take over the world. And you and I are playing games with God, can't even re read our Bible and study. And you think that we're ready for this? 
riot, unrest, bloodshed. And the only way to go through this, we've got to know Jesus. We've got to be in his principles. And we've got to be in this outpost. Now, let's continue. Involve the whole world in a struggle similar to that which can boss what? France. So what is it that's going to now, now, all of these teachings have been going on already. America is ready for this. Do you know that right now you're going to YouTube revolution and do you know that the whole world is already talking about revolution? Did you know that? Now you have men that know nothing of the Bible, men that know nothing of this, but they're looking at the conditions of the earth and they're talking about revolution. They are being trained for a revolution right now. They are exercising practices all around the world. But my brothers and sisters, you better know what the Bible says, what we are to do. Now, inspiration has told us what the issue is. The work of the people of God is to prepare for the events of the future, which will soon come upon them with what? Blinding, blinding force. What do you mean when it says blinding force? What is that talking about? That means it's going to be so surprising that you can't see it. You, it but the moment you look up, it's already there. Blinding force in the world. Now, watch the cause. Always study from cause to effect. In the world, what? Now, this is a different quotation, but it's saying the same thing. Am I right? Am I right? The first quotation says, centralizing of wealth and power. What is a monopoly? A centralizing of wealth and power. It says that in the world, gigantic monopolies will be formed. Men will bind themselves together in what? Unions that will wrap themselves in foes of the enemy. A few men will combine to grasp all the means. This is a monopoly. To be obtained in certain lines of business, the result, trade unions will be what? Formed. And those who refuse to join these unions will be what? This is where riot, unrest, bloodshed come in. Now, my brothers and sisters, you, if you start studying history, you'll find out that unions are now on the rise like never before. The question is, when will it happen? When monopoly reaches its limit, this is when the revolution is going to start. Now, when does monopoly reach its limit? We talked about last night. When does monopoly reach its limit? Talk to me. When the nations become bankrupt, then it is that revolution will begin. And that's scary. You know why that's scary? Because where are we right now? What's happening in Puerto Rico right now? What's happening in Greece right now? What's happening in Europe right now? All over the world. What's happening in America? You can't be 18 trillions nearly in debt and think that you have money in the bank. You can't think so. Well, we have to be out of our mind to think that if 18 trillion dollars in debt nearly, that you think that we have money in the bank, we're out of our mind. That means, now what do we start seeing happening? What, what happened in California? Are they talking about bankruptcy, yes or no? Yes. What about Detroit, bankruptcy, yes or no? Do you think, brothers and sisters, our cities are moving to a bankrupt state, yes or no? It's indication that we're nearing its limit, but the greatest sign that is getting ready to be overthrown, I showed you already last night, because God gave us the signal, all of this economic crisis is gonna to lead to a worldwide revolution, which is the opening of the bottomless what? Now why is that serious? Why is it so serious that we understand that a revolution is coming? It's not just because there's riot, unrest, bloodshed. That's bad enough, but there's something far more severe than that. When the bottomless pit opens up, who comes out of it? The beast. Yes, the devil, but before that. Revelation 17. Let's turn there quickly. Revelation 17. Revelation 17. Notice what the Bible says. Revelation 17. This is the full and final display of Satan. He has his masterpiece now, and now he brings on the power of the masterpiece. You're going to see this. Revelation 17, verse 8. I pray I have enough time to go through this. Revelation 17, verse 8, the Bible says, The beast that thou sawest was, and what? Is not, and shall ascend out of the what? What is that? That's out of the condition of what? Revolution. This is the Bible's text to say the same thing we just read in education, that what happened in France, bottomless pit, revolution, is going to happen worldwide in the end of time, that another revolution worldwide is coming in which the papacy is going to come right out of. The Bible says in verse 8, the beast that thou saw was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and when he comes out, where is he going to go? Now, why is he going into perdition? Talk to me, somebody. Because he is the son of what? Perdition. Now, my brothers and sisters, that is the end. That is destruction. And now, you better remember that name, perdition. Now, who is, this, who is this power that goes into perdition? The Bible goes on. And they that dwell on the earth shall do what? Now, who is the power that the Bible says in Revelation that we're going to wander after? The Bible says in Revelation 13, 3, I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. His deadly wound was healed. And all of the world did what? Wandered after the beast. 
Now that tells us then that this power is the beast power or the papacy that the world is going to wonder at and the Bible says that it's going to happen after the bottomless pit, after the revolution. And that means that if we see the revolution, it's time for the Sunday law. Now my brothers and sisters, what is the greatest event that lets us know that the economy is getting ready to collapse so that this revolution is going to start the greatest event? Remember we studied? When does the Bible say that Babylon is going to be overthrown? When she looks like heaven. That's when she's going to be overthrown? The Bible says in Isaiah 13, 19 that when, Sodom look, when, when Babylon looks like Solomon and Gomorrah, then she's going to be what? So when is the economy going to bottom out when she looks like Sodom and what? When did America now reach the state where we look just like Simon and Gamar? Which means it's time for the economic crisis that started in 2008 to now bottom out. We're here. The first caliphate twin was born, and the next one comes after the revolution. Now, we talk about this man of sin. Who's the man of sin? Talk to me. Let's go to, just, let's go to the text real quick. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And when you get there, let me know by saying amen. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Notice what the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And when you get there, let me know by saying amen. We want to begin in verse 2. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 2. The Bible says that you may not be soon shaken in mind or troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. Verse 3. Let's read that together. Let what? No man deceive you by any means. For that day, that is the second coming of Jesus, shall not come except there come a what? Falling away first, and that man of sin be what? Who is this man of sin? We looked at him last night from the Bible. Who is the man of sin? The papacy. The papacy. Who is the man of sin? The papacy. Who is that man who stands at the head claiming to be God? Well, that's the Pope. This is that man of sin. Then the Bible says it gives him another name. Remember this name. It says, this man of sin be revealed. Who is this man? So in, Jesus can't come until it's revealed that the papacy is the man of sin. He is the son of sin. All right, let's look at this. The Bible says in verse 4, Who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he is God sitting where? In the temple of God, showing himself that he is what? Has the papacy done this? She's doing this right now. Now, my brothers and sisters, we know this is. We saw this. Now, we found out that this beast received a deadly wound, but it, it's almost here. We looked at it last night. We know this is going to come after the revolution. We know that the greatest signal was the fact that this says that the landmark Supreme Court rules same-sex marriage legal nationwide 2015. Now it's time for the overturning of America. Am I right? Yes. Babylon is about to fall. Her economy is about to fall. Her social structure is about to fall. Her political system is about to fall. Now, my brothers and sisters, we should safely identify, just like Daniel, the fall of Babylon. Did Daniel identify the fall of Babylon, yes or no? Yes. Daniel said he understood by books how long Babylon was going to be there. Babylon had a limit of how long it could exist. Literal Babylon and spiritual Babylon. God has given us the ability to do this. And then now they're talking about we need to rebuild the foundation of America. They said it's gone. Some of these twins, we pass on this. You know that. Now, let's move on. So as we looked at this, we found out about this fall of Babylon. We know what happened. I'm going to pass through this. Let me just read this. It says, not yet, however, can it be said that she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of fornication. The change is a progressive one, and the perfect fulfillment of the fall of Babylon is yet what? Future. Future. How she made, she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of fornication, the prophet says. Volume 8, 94. How is this done? By forcing men to accept what? What event is that? Talk to me, somebody. So when the national sin law is passed, Babylon will fall. So that means that the bottomless pit must come just before that. Now let's continue. Only by changing God's law could the papacy exalt itself above what? Great kind of verse 446. So when the Bible says that the, the man of sin would exalt itself above God, all that's called God, what does she do? Remember now, that's always the principle for falling. The Bible says pride goeth before a fall. So the man of sin exalted himself 
above all that is called God, and then there was a falling away. Daniel, you'll know that Nebuchadnezzar, he exalted himself, and then he fell. Belshazzar exalted himself, and then he what? Fell. All is in the Bible, Daniel 4 and 5. So my brothers and sisters, pride goes before fall with men and nations. The principles are the same. Now when we look at this, what event did Rome do to exalt herself above God is when Daniel 7.25 says, she thought to change what? So if America, Protestant Babylon, the Protestant churches that make up Babylon today, if they're going to fall at the Sunday law, that means that they must do something of prideful exaltation. And by thinking that they can change the law of God and make a son in law in America, is that proud? Yes or no? Yes. This is going to call us to uh, America to fall. This self exaltation. This is what happened to Lucifer. How thou fallen from heaven? Oh, Lucifer. He exalted himself. My brother and sister, all throughout the Bible, you see the same thing. Now, the Bible says that this power, before the coming of Christ, he's going to be revealed as the son of what? Now, in the Bible, there's only one other person who has the name, the son of perdition. Who is it? Does the Bible say that? Let's go to John chapter 17. John 17. Let's go there quickly. John 17. The Bible says in John 17. Remember, it says son of perdition. Now, all books of the Bible, we're told, meet and end in the book of Revelation. Now, John 17 says, beginning in, this is the last prayer of Christ, more is contained in this chapter than in any other chapter of the New Testament, we're told. Now in John 17, notice what it says, beginning in verse 12. John 17, here's the last prayer of Jesus. He says, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy what? Name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the what? Son of perdition. That the scripture might be what? So this son of perdition is a type or a symbol of the man of sin. So there's something about Judas that will let us know about the Pope when it's time for the passing of a national Sunday law. Because before Jesus can come, the man of sin must be revealed, the son of perdition. So I want to ask you a question as we look at John 17. What is the name of this new Pope? I wonder why. Well, if you're here, you'll find out, amen? <laughs> CNN, Vatican analysts, Pope Francis, a name choice, president shattering. I wonder what it's talking about. Watch what this says. Cardinal, this name. The new Pope is breaking historic ground by choosing the name, what? Has this ever been done so ca casually? It says it's historic. It says it's the first time the name is being used by a what? So remember now, the, the, there must be revealed the son of perdition before Jesus comes. Now, it says it's the first time this name is being used by a pope, said CNN Vatican expert John Allen. Pope Francis chose his name in honor of St. Francis of... If I say that right, I don't know. Well, you know what it is, amen. <laughs> because he is a lover of the poor, poor said Vatican deputy spokesman Thomas. <laughs> Allen described the name selection as the most stunning choice and president shattering. There are cornerstone figures in Catholicism, such as St. Francis. Allen said figures of such stature as St. Francis, irreputable, uh, that they're irrepeatable, that there can be only one what? Francis. The name symbolizes what? Poverty, humility, simplicity, and rebuilding the Catholic Church. The new pope is sending a signal. He's sending a what? Signal. He's sending a what? Signal. You better understand the signal. If you don't know your signals, you can be in a trouble. Am I right? Yeah. If you don't know your signals and you drive, you're in an accident. It says the new pope is sending a signal that this will not be business as usual. That meant this pope came on the scene. We showed you last night. He's not playing around. Let's continue. Pope Francis, what's the next word? Yeah. Now, what did the Bible say? The Bible says that the man of sin, the son of perdition, must be what? So Pope Francis reveals why he chose his name. Catholic hero reveals. Now, and that means if he's been revealed now, it's time. What do you say? Man, my hair almost stands when I read this. this brothers, this is serious. He says he longs for a church that is what? 
poor and for poor. Pope Francis revealed why he had chosen his name at an audience with journalists this morning, departing from his prepared speech. So he's, he's, he's in the speech, and he's, he's going through his notes, he's reading through, and all of a sudden he gets and he stops. Now a spirit takes over him. He said that some people were still uncertain if his name referred to St. Francis Xavier or St. Francis de Sales or St. Francis Assisa. He said that he was seated next to his friend, the Brazilian Cardinal Claudio Humes, during the conclave when the matter became what? Dangerous. He said he comforted me. When it became clear the Cardinals had elected him Pope, he said that the Cardinal embraced me and did what? Now, brothers and sisters, who was the one that did some kissing? Remember this? Embraced me and kissed me and said, don't forget the poor. And that struck me. The poor. Immediately I thought of St. Francis, Francis of Assisi. Francis was a man of, when they shall say peace and safety. A man of poverty. A man who loved and protected creation, climate change. That was when he chose the name what? Francis. He explained, adding, how I would love a church that is poor and for the poor. My brothers and sisters, you better understand that this pope is about business. Now listen to me. When, was the, when did the crisis come for Christ under the Son of Perdition? Because remember now, if, if Judas is a type of the papacy, then Christ is a type of the remnant church. Am I right? Christ was persecuted and was secretly set up by Judas. What was the event when the limit was reached for the setting up of Christ? Because that is a type of what this pope is going to do to persecute Christ in the person of his saints. Jesus said, whatever you've done to the least of these, you've done unto what? So what was the event? Does anybody remember what was the event that pushed Judas to the limit? The washing. Uh, but but now, what happened to push him to the limit first? The alabaster box. Don't you remember? Mary Magdalene came in. She was loved. She was so excited that God had forgiven her sins. She comes over. She breaks the box. The smell goes out. Judas sees it. And Judas, the son of perdition, looks at it and he says, that was a great, this could have been sold and given to the poor. Now Jesus said, whenever you preach the gospel, especially the everlasting gospel, you better make mention of this. So I want to do what Jesus said. Amen. So now, so now he comes. And then he says, he, he used the pretense of helping the poor to set up persecution for Jesus. Is this true? Yes. Study the life of Christ, especially the closing scenes. Now, my brothers and sisters, that means, brothers and sisters, that this pope who chose his name Francis, as he's coming now to help the poor to Congress, what is he really doing? Making provision to persecute the saints. And if we don't go to Gethsemane now, we're lost. If we don't pray now, we're lost. If we don't go into our post now, if Jesus, you know what Jesus did? When Jesus recognized what Judas did, the Bible says he sung a hymn. He didn't pick up Kurt Franklin. He didn't pick up all this other foolishness. He sung a hymn. And then he went to the outpost. He went to the mountain. He began to commune, dear God, I need a new heart. I need to get us ready because the crisis was coming. This is a type for us. He said, this is the man of peace, man of power. Pope Francis is revealed, Pope Francis to address Congress. So when he comes to Congress, you know what the issue is, don't you? This is provision. Secretly, or overtly, he's helping the poor. Secretly, he's setting up persecution. Are we ready? No, we're not. We need to get ready, though. What do you say? And he's coming to America. Not only is he coming to Congress, but he's bringing up the world family meetings. Am I right? You know all about that. I'm going to skip over that now because I've got to get some more grounds. You want some more, are you ready to go? Pass through this. You'll get some of these on the DVDs. I can't go through this right now. It tells us why he's coming. You see, he's coming in September. Now, accidentally, 
Do you know that every September for the last few years, there's been a national Back to Sunday movement that's been growing larger and larger and larger, and the papacy comes right after that. And it's coming for a World Family Day now, praise God. We're going to be in Philadelphia a little bit uh, around that same time. And while he's preaching, he's helping the poor, we're going to show he's the son of perdition. Amen. And while he goes there talking about he's helping, we're going to show him that's the man of sin. Well, I think if the devil is making offensive, you better get up and make it offensive. If the devil right now is now stealing a march, it's time not to sit down. We must get up and do something, brothers and sisters. Amen. There must be a solution to this revolution. The devil is working overtime in 2015, and it's not over yet. What are we going to do? Are we going to sit down and do nothing, or is it time for aggressive warfare? I don't know about you, but we're arming our soldiers. We're going to be armed and dangerous. What do you think he's coming with? He said, keep stores open on Sunday. It's not beneficial for what? He's saying, look, when we worship or when we don't honor Sunday, society breaks down. This is why there's anarchy. This is why there's revolution. He said, why, the, why, why he said poor people need jobs to have dignity, he indicated that the opening stores and other business on Sundays as a way to create job wasn't beneficial for what? He said, that's not going to help the structure of society. And that the streets should be, that, 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 that the stress should be on what? So he said that Sundays and its worship is to help families. So if he's coming for a world family meeting, what do you think he's talking about? I'm going to pass through that. New York Times, he said the same thing. I'm going to pass through that. You know that. I'm going to pass through that. But we can see this is coming. We know it's here. We know it's happening. You know about the senator from Arizona. You know that, don't you? But now I want to ask you this. Because we know this coming. I don't want to take a little time there. We need to get to this solution. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. This is what I love. I love. I love to have the, that God. I'm going to tell you something. This day is scripture fulfilled in our ears. Now, why does the Sunday law get passed? Somebody talk to me. Let me black that out. Why does the Sunday law get passed? Talk to me quickly. Talk, talk to me out there. Up there, down here, talk to me. Why does the national Sunday law get passed? What do you say, brother? The only reason why the Sunday law is passed. Now, remember, Sunday law has been existing for long periods of time. Am I right? Sunday worship. is. Why does the nation embrace it? Because most people don't go to church on Sabbath or Sunday. Most people don't go to church at all. So why is it that they will begin to enforce Sunday worship when you have so many atheists and sometimes uh, same-sex marriages who throw their uh, uh, urine on the Bible? Why in the world would they begin to go to church on Sunday? Is because the devil has learned from looking at God's plan that the only way to get the world to embrace his program is to put it in the context of a solution to life's problems. As long as you just say, come to church on Sunday because your father did, your father did, the atheist is not going to listen to you. But if you tell him this is the way to help his family, he might listen. If you tell him that this is the way to help his pocket, he might listen. If you tell him this is the way to help his health, he might listen. If you tell him this is the way to help his planet and stop the environmental devastation, he might listen. And so he begins to listen. Watch now, volume 913. There are not many, even among educators and statesmen, that is the government, who comprehend the... But we've been taught to study from cause to effect if we believe true education. Now, this philosophical liberal arts system doesn't teach that, but in true education, it does. It says, it compre uh, uh, comprehend the causes that underlie the present state of what? The world doesn't understand why we're going into a bottomless pit. They don't know why. They're struggling in vain trying to bring us out of the bottomless pit, but we keep going lower and lower, but God has given us the solution. It says, those who hold the reins of government, let's read it together, are not able to do what? Solve the what? Problem of what? Moral corruption, pornography, fornication, adultery, all these sins. Then it says poverty, pauperism, and increasing what? They are struggling in vain to place business operations on a more what? Can they fix the economy, yes or no? No. If men would give more heed to the teachings of God, they would find a to what? To the problems that do what? perplex them. So
So my brothers and sisters, why do they pass the Sunday law? They don't understand how to solve their problems in the society, in the home. And so when the Pope comes out of this bottomless pit, this corruption, and says, I have the solution to your problem, and the solution is coming back to church on Sunday, the world will follow and wonder after the beast. But where did he get that from? You see, everything God does, Satan has a what? Where is the real solution? You see, the only way to get the people from that false solution, you've got to give them the what? Real solution. So my brother and sister, I want to ask you a question. Where will we find the real solution? Now look at the quotation. Look at it. What did it say? If men would give more heed to the what? So where is the real solution? So then we have to find in God's word where that solution is. Now, now God's word goes from Genesis to what? Now I want to ask you a question. Where in Genesis to Revelation would you find that solution? Let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. I'm reading the gospel. The what? The gospel. the gospel is a wonderful simplifier of life's problems. The what? The gospel is a wonderful simplifier of life's problems. What is the solution to life's problems? The gospel. Where would I find that? It goes from Genesis Revelation, but where is it focused and centered on? Revelation 14, 6 says, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting what? Well, what's in that gospel? The solution to the problems of what? But most people don't know that. Now watch it. Inspiration says, It will be declared that men are offending God by the violation of the Sunday Sabbath. This sin has brought calamities which will not cease until Sunday observance shall be strictly enforced. That those who present the fourth commandment, thus destroying reverence for Sunday, are troublers of the people, preventing their restoration to divine favor and what? So he puts Sunday law in light of a solution to the problems that are filling this world. Where do we find the solution? In the what? Gospel. Gospel. All right. Let's continue. Let's go a little further. Inspiration says that God has given us three angels' messages. We don't understand as we should, but we have to tax our mind. The theme of greatest importance is the third angel's message, embracing the message of the first and second angels. All should understand the truths contained where? So in these, ever, in these three angels' messages have the everlasting gospel, and there are truths, principles in there that must be practiced that will create the outposts. It says, all should understand the truths what? What does that say right there? Contained in the messages, in these messages, and then what, what should they do with these truths? Just talk about them. Demonstrate them in what? Daily. Daily life, for this is essential to what? So the gospel must be to me not a lifeless force, not a living, not a theory, but a living force that can change the life. It must be seen as a solution to the problems of life. Never forget what I'm getting ready to tell you. Every doctrine of Christ. What did I say? Every doctrine of Christ, of Christ contains a solution to the problems of life. And when you understand that, then instead of fighting the doctrine or fighting the gospel, you then embrace it because it will solve our problems. Three angels' message must be demonstrated in daily life. This is, is, is it salvific, yes or no? It is essential to salvation. Well, that's what the gospel is. It's the power of God unto what? Salvation, Romans 1.16. So we can see that. It contains this. It's our containers. Here is it. Now, let me give you an example of this for a moment. In the gospel, we have different things that can solve a problem. Is disease a great problem? Yes. Is it a problem in the world? Yes. Would it be wonderful to be able to solve 50% of disease in women? Would that be wonderful? Yes. What is one place I can go to the gospel that can see how to solve 50% of women's problems? Watch. Many have become lifelong invalids through their compliance with the demands of what? Fashion. Displacements and deformities, cancers and other terrible diseases are among the evils resulting from what? Fashionable dress. Let's read it together. Half. What's the number for half? Half the diseases of women are caused by... So in the gospel, can I find dress reform? But most people think that it's just arbitrary. But do you know that if we really understood dress reform, we need to learn to see it and present it as a solution to a life what? Do you, know that, do you know that many women would embrace dress reform if they knew that 50% of their diseases could be solved if they simply embraced dress reform? Every doctrine of Christ 
is a solution to a problem in life. I mean, look, sometimes we wear the clothes and the fashion says that a woman, she looks nice, she looks like this. Coca-Cola bottle, that's what they say. Now, if you look at physiology, you know that can't be true. There are no, no woman is shaped like that. You have to squeeze in and naturally get that way. You, you're doing that. What happens to the organs of the body? Can they function properly? Man, that's dangerous. And brothers, I'll be, I'll be careful. You know what they call those type of clothing? They call it wasp waist. You ever seen a wasp? If you look at his waist, what does it look like when you see the, the waist of the wasp? It gets that thin. And any time a woman will dress like that, you better be careful. She has a sting to it. <laughs> now, there are other problems to the world, brothers and sisters. There are other problems to the world. Can you tell me another world problem? Talk to me, somebody. Is world hunger a problem, yes or no? The United Nations say world hunger is a problem, yes or no? Now, what in the world can solve world hunger? The Bible teaches modesty in what? This is in this book, Ministry of Healing. This is how Ministry of Healing puts it. It says in this book, it says on page 287, it says, the Bible teaches modesty in dress, and like manner the women adorn themselves in what? Is it biblical, yes or no? Then it says, money is a trust from God. We're getting ready to see a crisis based on money. Then it says, in the professed what? Christian world. Is that talking about the atheists? Is that talking about the Buddhists? It says in the professed Christian world, enough is expended for what? Jewels and needlessly expensive dress for jewels and what? Just two things, jewelry and needlessly expensive dress to feed how much? All, All the hungry and to what? So you mean that with dress reform we could end world hunger just by taking off of jewelry in the Christian world. I believe that many Christians, if they knew, that just by laying down their jewelry to become humble like Jesus who took down all of that materials off that many would do it in order to solve a problem of life. My brothers and sisters, there's no arbitrary doctrines. Every doctrine of Christ is a solution to a problem of life. The gospel is a wonderful simplifier of life's problems. Now, of course, by the way, you can't take jewelry into the most holy place. Am I right? But all this is is trying to take us back to the principles of heaven. This is modesty in dress. What about here? You think that's hurting some people? You know that KFC doesn't mean Kentucky Fried Chicken. You, you were taught that, but you know now your eyes are open that it means killing folks continually. You know that Popeyes doesn't mean Popeyes because your eyes are open now. Watch, watch quietly, watch quietly. You know you, you, your eyes are open now. You know that you're not going to eat this menu. You, you've never been to Popeyes, so let me take you inside. Here's the menu. Diet, flesh, dairy products, all of that. That's the standard American diet. It's sad. Now, but most people don't know what it's going to do. Watch Popeyes. You watching them? Pope what? So those who eat the menu that is on Popeyes, when the beast comes from the bottomless pit, from the revolution, they, they have a diet that will make them say what? Yes to the Pope. Now your eyes open. Every time you pass it next time, know who you're looking at. Amen. Amen. That son of, that man of sin must be revealed. <laughs> let me keep on. Let me, my time's getting away. Whoa, I don't know. How did that get in there? Right, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me hasten on. Let me hasten on. Let me hasten on. You got to go home. You got to go home. Let me hasten on. But everything is a solution to a problem of life. The world can't solve its problems, can it? No. There are not many who understand the causes that underlie the present state of society. Those who hold the reins of government, they're not able to solve the problem. If men would give more heed to the teachings of God's word, they will find a what? Solution. Where is the solution? Where is the solution? Would you say it with me? The gospel is a wonderful simplifier. Of life. And it's not only a, 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 a solver, it makes it simple when it solves the problem. Amen. Now watch, great controversy. Watch, beautiful, great controversy. This is so wonderful. Let's read together, 279. And the revolution, with all its horrors, terrible is coming. With their dire result, flourishing manufacturing cities fail and to decay, fertile districts return to their native wildness, intellectual dullness, more declension succeeded, and a period of unwanted progress, Paris became one vast, Alms house. Terrible. 
And it's estimated that at the breaking out of the what? 200,000 paupers. They can't solve this. Claim charity from the hands of the king. Who is the only one that prospered? The Jesuits alone. Who is the Pope? The Jesuits alone flourished in the decaying nation and ruled with dreadful tyranny over churches and schools. And they're still ruling schools today. The prisons and the galleys. I wonder what the solution is. Great Converse 279. Let's read it. The gospel would have brought to France the what? The what? The gospel would have brought to France the solution of those political and social problems that baffle the world's great men, state men, and parliamentarians. It baffled the skill of her clergy, her king, her legislators, and finally plunged the nation into anarchy and ruin. Give me another name. Revolution. What would have been the solution to the revolution? The gospel. The gospel. All right. Let's move on. My time is getting away. Hasten on. Now, brothers and sisters, when you study the gospel, who is the one who knew how to, the gospel better than anyone else on the earth? Now, do you know that most people don't understand that Jesus actually showed how the gospel was to be carried? Go to Matthew quickly. Go to Matthew. We're going to have a few more minutes. So You've got to go with me quickly. Matthew chapter 4. Let's go there quickly. Matthew chapter 4. The Bible says, we have to rush through this part because I want you to get this to get to the main point. Matthew chapter 4. Here's Jesus, beginning in verse 23. Matthew 4, beginning in verse uh, 23. When you're there, let me know by saying amen. The Bible says, and Jesus went about all Galilee. What was he doing? Teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and doing what? Healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. So Jesus, as he gave the gospel, he was doing three things connected with the gospel. He was doing what? Teaching, preaching, healing there. But there was one other aspect to this. What was the fourth? Does the Bible say that? Go to Luke. Go to Luke chapter 8. Go there quickly. Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, beginning in verse 39. Luke 8, verse 39. Here, Jesus heals the demoniac. And the Bible says, in verse 39, it says, Return to thy house and show how great things God have done unto thee. And he went his way and did what? Published throughout the whole city. Now, great things Jesus had done unto him. So, connected with Christ's ministry was teaching what else? Preaching what else? Healing what else? Publish. Hear this everlasting gospel. It has a solution to the problems of life. Given us through the sanctuary. Here we see in the nature of man. Now, you'll find out man has four natures mixed into one. He is physical, mental, spiritual, and social. Say it, to get, say it with me. He is what? Physical, mental, spiritual, and one more time. He is physical, mental, spiritual, and what? Social. But the Bible says in John, Genesis 2, it wasn't good for man to be alone. God made man a social creature. Doesn't mean that everybody need to get married, but he made them all social. Amen. Amen. I thought I'd add that in there. So all of these four. Now, do you know that every problem of life can only come through one of these four areas? Did you know that? That every problem in life can only come through one of these four doors. Either it's a physical problem, a mental problem, a spiritual problem, or a social problem. Am I right? So then that means that the solution to the problems of life must be given in a fourfold way to restore man's fourfold, fourfold problems. Are you with me? So that means that the gospel that brings the solution should have four great bases in which to provide the solutions of life. Do you know that this is why when you have a social network craving, Facebook is a social network. Am I right? Do you know that there's never been a generation that's been more hooked to social networks than now? Do you know that is a social addiction? Because we don't understand these four, these four phases. The man that spends hours on Facebook and doesn't spend time in the Bible, he is deprived of, his, uh, of a relationship with Jesus Christ. This, this is a problem. There must be social reform, physical reform, mental reform, and spiritual reform. This is why the gospel is this way. This is the nature of man that had to be redeemed. So when Christ came preaching the gospel, Christ addressed the four phases of man. And so his work was fourfold, to meet the fourfold needs of man. So in Christ's work, what did he do to meet the spiritual need? Talk to me. Preaching. Mental need. Teaching. Physical need. Healing. Social need. Publishing. You know the word public? Public. Publish. That that publishing work is designed to bring us to sociality with other people, as we shall see. Let's continue. Now, do you know that the Remnant Church has the exact same mission? Do you know that God has given the seven Adventists four great 
phases of work to do the same thing that Christ did. Am I right? The finishing work. Did Jesus finish the work in the outer court? Yes or no? Yes, Jesus. Did Jesus finish the work in the outer court? Yes or no? He finished. Remember, the outer court has a work bought. Most holy place has a work brought. So he finished the work in the outer court, and he did it with these four phases. Now, did he do these four phases by living in the city or from an outpost? Go to Luke 21. Let's see that. Luke 21. The Bible says in Luke chapter 21, the Bible says, beginning in verse 37, he's doing his work in 37, verse 37. It says, and in the daytime, he was doing what? Teaching where? Question, where was the temple? Where were the memorials of God? Where were the temples to be in the what? So it was in Jerusalem, that great, that, the city. It says he was teaching in the city in the day, daytime, and at night he went where? Praise God. Out where? To his outpost. He went out and did what? A bowl. Not in the city, but where? In the mount that is called the Mount of Olives. So Jesus, he worked the cities, but he lived in the mountains. He was teaching, preaching, healing, publishing in the cities, worked the mountain, uh, uh, lived in the, in the country area. Next verse, verse 38. And all the people came what? Early in the morning to him in the what? So you'll notice he went back out to sleep, but someone said, it shouldn't have been more convenient. If he came early back in the morning in the temple, why didn't he just stay overnight in the city? But Jesus knew that he could not do in the city what needed to be done unless he went out of the city to get something from God. Amen. Same with us, brothers and sisters. And so in the finishing work, we have to do evangelistic work that corresponds to our preaching. We have schools. We have sanitariums. And we have our publishing houses. These great institutions do accomplish the same thing. And the prophet says, volume 751, it says, God has qualified his people to enlighten the world. He has entrusted them with faculties by which they are to extend his work and, and, to, it's, and, and circle the globe in all parts of the earth. They are to establish what? Sanitariums, what else? Schools, what else? Publishing houses, what else? And kindred facilities for the accomplishment of his work. So these institutions are to allow us to finish the work. They are to be in the out in the country. Operate as outposts so the work can be finished. The closing message of the gospel is to be carried to every kindred and tongue and people. And in foreign countries, many enterprises for the advancement of this message must yet be begun and carried what? Forward. So we can see that when this operates like that, this is outposts. Repeatedly, we have to work the city from outposts. In these cities, we have a house of worship, just like Jesus worked and worked the cities. But institution for the publication of our literature, for the healing of the sick, for the train of workers that be sent outside the city. Just look, all it is is a life pattern after the life of Christ. And our post is not a branch. I can't go through that now. I'm going to pass on that. I'm going to pass on that right now. We can see this is the plan from the beginning. I'm going to pass on that right now. We can see God going through all of this. Threefold message bring them to existence. I'm going to pass on right now. These threefold messages and the angels are the, are the principles that brought them into existence. Do we need these institutions today, yes or no? Inspiration said these institutions are designed to prepare a people to do what? Stand. Now, do you know that when we get an outpost, which is really, uh, all an outpost is simply, is a complete system of living based on the plan of redemption as revealed in the heavenly sanctuary. That's all an outpost is. It's a complete system of living based on the plan of redemption as revealed in the heavenly sanctuary. It's the life of heaven upon earth focused not only on living this life, but bringing others into it so that we can be prepared to go back to heaven. It's living the life of heaven right here on this, on this earth. Now watch this, brothers and sisters. Hear that life. You know, in that life, in heaven, do they have to buy or sell? Yes or no? Do they have to buy and sell in heaven? No. So my brothers and sisters, if we live the life of heaven, can we live in a time where no man can buy or sell? Yes, we can. Here are this outpost. If you look at it, you can see it develop. Here's the country outpost. There are the workers' homes. They have home sanitariums there. They have the training institutes there. They have the publishing and media centers there. They have the industrial training. They have the, the health experience, the medical evangelism, the food factories, the nature study and community. They're learning how to live out there in the country with God. But they're not only to stay there with their home gardens and chapel. They have to have workers that can bring guests so that people can learn the life of heaven. Is that right? And they learn life of heaven, then they bring them to the outpost. Outpost is city missions. They are community relief centers. All right, let me keep on that. Health food stores, hygienic restaurants, house-to-house -house work, treatment rooms, lecture halls. You see it building up. General public work that's done, cooking schools, medical evangelism, simple treatments, industrial service. It becomes to be a lifetime, uh, a system of living all throughout the day, my brothers and sisters, seven days a week, demonstrating it in daily life, for this is essential to salvation, but it's just the principles of gospel. Now, when we live like this, do you know that we don't need the government? We don't need to be able to buy or sell. We can live the life of heaven upon the earth. Now, someone says, but how can we do all of that? 
Do you know that all of this that we call outposts, I can't go through all now because I want to get ready to close. My time is gone. My brother and sister, listen to me. All of this work right here centers on one of these institutions being done. What do you think is the institution that's going to bring this into existence? The purpose of our health what? It's not first and foremost to be that of hospitals. The health institutions connected with the closing work of the gospel. Christ is the one to be revealed in all the institutions connected with the closing work, but none of them can do it as fully as the what? Health institutions. So what is the greatest institution uh, uh, of the four that God wants to use to bring all the other institutions to, into existence? What is, what is it called by inspiration? Sanitarium. If a sanitarium connected with the closing message fails to lift up Christ and the principles of the gospel, the principles of the what? As developed in the third annual's message, it fails in its most important feature and contradicts the very object of its existence. And there's a difference between a sanitarium and a lifestyle center. I'm going to have a handout that I'm going to give to you at the end of this that will go through all this in detail. The sanitarium work and the finishing work and the outpost and the relief work because I'm not going to be able to finish it. But now watch. Watch how this is supposed to be started. Wherever, now one of the things that's supposed to be started is a hygienic restaurant. Is that right? But how is a hygienic restaurant going to be started? Watch now. Wherever medical missionary work is carried on in our large cities, first, what's to be done next? Cooking school should be held. And wherever a strong educational missionary work is in progress, what should be made then? So do we just go into a city and start a hygienic restaurant? Yes or no? No. We go into a city and do what? Medical missionary work. Once we do a strong medical missionary work, then people want to learn how to change their, their, their food preparation, then cooking schools are started. Once strong cooking schools are established, then hygienic restaurants and food factories are developed as a result of that. So you'll find out, and this will give practical illustration of proper selection of food. But what trains these medical missionaries to go out from our what? Trained workers. So if no sanitarium, no medical missionary. No medical missionary, no cooking school. No cooking school, no hygienic restaurant. You know, I can go through every one of the institutions and show you that it comes from the sanitarium. Every one of them. This is why inspiration says that this word, inspiration says very clearly that these outpost centers, I'm going to pass on that, talk about this, talk about the sanitarium, but it says the Lord will give to our sanitariums whose work is already established an opportunity to cooperate with him in assisting newly established plants. Every new institution is to be regarded as a sister helper in the great work of proclaiming the what? Now let's read this together. Let's read this together. What does it say? The what? God has what? Given our what? Sanitariums an opportunity to set in operation a work that will be as a stone instinct with what? Life. Growing as it is rolled by an invisible hand. Oh, I wish we had time just to study that. Let this mystic stone be set in motion because when you set that mystic stone in motion outpost pops on the scene it's just like popcorn you ever pop some popcorn you get that condition right pop yes then you think it's over pop another will come <laughs> but it's in the seed and the seed is the gospel and the gospel is the three angels messages now that's why the devil took them away. But we can get it back. What do you say? Now, so watch now. What was set in motion in the mystic stone? What will bring the apostles into effect if we learn how to establish what? What class do we have here? This is why. Now watch, brothers and sisters. Watch the screen. You watch it? Mystic stone. Praise God. <laughs> that thing was set in motion. Praise God. Man, this is going to me excited, brothers and sisters. What does it get me excited? And let me tell you something, you have but a few short months to set this stone in motion. So then the question would be as we close, how would we start a sanitarium? Is that a good question? Can I tell you before we close? Can I tell you that? Yes. Health restaurants and treatment rooms should be established, so they go together. I'm going to pass on that. I, I talked about this, I, I talked about the concept of this, so I'm going to pass on that. Everything stems from that sanitarium through Jesus Christ. Inspiration talks about that those who do not realize the necessity of what needs to be done will be what? Who's he going to work with? Now, normally you may not know this, but if you read that whole quotation, do you know what the real thing is about? Do you know that real, what this really is about? If you go back and read manuscript 312, it's about the common people starting sanitariums. That's what the whole letter is about, actually. So when you read the paragraph before, paragraph after, you'll see it was talking about starting sanitariums, home sanitariums. Now, 
Now, I'm going to tell you something. Let men who have the ability to tell what a what should be and that, that, that there, is, there is a need for such institution go to the Gentiles for financial what? Now, if you've got a lifestyle center, you can't go to the Gentiles for that. You won't get inspiration from it. Inspiration says that you know what a sanitarium is because it's different. There are men of the world who will give of their means for schools and what? This plan was opened before me as a way of coming in touch with wealthy men of what? Through this means, not a few of these wealthy men will become interested and may hear and believe the truth for this what? Now watch this. You, you understand a little bit as we close. Let me pass on this quickly. When all these institutions need to be brought into existence. Sanitarium is the keys are going to bring it into existence, setting the motion of Mrs. Stone. Without the vision, it disappears. With the vision, it comes back on the scene. We have to understand how to do that. Let me pass on. Inspiration says, the Lord will work in the last work and very much out of, the, out of the common order of things and in a way that will be contrary to any what? There will be those among us who always want to control the work of God. Even when the loud cry goes forth, it says. Then it says in Testament Minutes 300, God will use what? Amen. Ways, and say the next part with me, and what? Amen. Means which it will be seen that he is taking the what? Reins where? The workers will be surprised that these means that show he's taking the reins, what type of means will they be? Because the gospel is a wonderful simplifier. Is that right? Now, sometimes the, the means to start the sanitarium seems so simple that people don't do it. Let's see what the prophet says in Bible 979. A great work is to be done in our world in a what? Do we need that? Yes or no? Great work in a little time. How? It says, and we must study to understand and what else? More than we have in past years, the providence of God in placing in our hands the precious volumes, what? Christ's object lessons and ministry of healing. Now, wait a minute now. I thought we just said that we had to do a great work in a little time. Why are you telling me that we need Christ's object lessons and ministry of healing unless there's something about those books that will make us do a great work in a little time? As a what? That's a simple means, isn't it? Pass on that. The book, does inspiration speak of the relief word? Yes or no? The book, Ministry of Healing, volume 984. The book, Ministry of Healing, Christ's Advocate Lessons, are peculiarly adapted for everything. My heart has rejoiced as I have learned of a revival of what? The relief word. Some have been given a special training for the work of selling ministry of healing. And as they have visited homes in neighboring cities, the blessings of heaven have rested richly upon them. And favorable impressions have been made in behalf of our people and their what? And you know that God has created a work to disarm prejudice and to bring us into the communities so that when the revolution starts, none will touch us. I'll show you that more completely tomorrow. I can't show you the footage tonight, but I want to get ready to close here. What was closely associated with leave work? Men, many have never learned how to sell the books dedicated to the what? Advancement of our what? So you mean there are some books that were supposed to bring institutions into existence? Yes or no? But such should not excuse themselves. They should study diligently how they may do their part faithfully in connection with the circulation of these precious books. Our schools and Sanitariums must be conducted on a high plane of what? How is it going to be brought to the proper place? And a solemn responsibility rests upon the preacher. All to help place these institutions on vantage ground by giving the what? Relief books a wide circulation. Christ, I'm going to minister of healing. What is God's great purpose in these books? Which is what it says. It, remember, God's purpose don't fail. It was God's purpose that by the sale of what? Ministry of Healing Christ of Lessons, much means should be raised for the work of our what? Sanitary and schools. If, uh, if our people will now engage in the sale of these books as they are, we should have much more what? Means that we now have to carry the work in the way the Lord designed that it should be carried. How does God design that we should carry the work? It is God's design. It is God's what? Design. Now, if we do the book, Ministry of Healing Christ of Lessons, we can carry the work as the way the Lord what? It is God's design that our people should locate where? 
outside the cities and from these outposts warn the cities. And so if we don't use these books, we will never have the means to bring in the way God said. Someone says, that's too simple. Two books? March around Jericho seven times? Sling David? Watch. There has been a dearth of means for our educational work because we have neglected to follow fully the what? The Lord now asks that energy and zeal be given to carrying out his methods. The books what? Christ, how do ministry of healing are the Lord's specified agencies for the financial aid. We're going to the government for financial aid of our institutions. By following, is it a plan? The plan that he has laid down, a continued work of education may be going on. Now, I have a hand now, because I can't go through all of it now. I have a hand now that goes through this in detail of what that plan is. 12-page document that goes through statement of the statement. This is just a short page that goes through the plan, how to put it together, how it's going to be done. And my brothers and sisters, it, we can do this now. Do you know that if you would just take the book, Christ Object Lesson, Ministry of Healing, you know the solution to life is in those books. That's what I just read from. Do you know if you take the books and read them and practice them, your home will become a sanitarium. One point that can never be forgotten by our work is that the Lord Jesus Christ is our chief what? He has outlined a what? By which the schools may be relieved of their indebtedness, and he will not vindicate the course of those who lay this plan aside for a lack of confidence in his what? When his people will come up united to the help of his cause in the earth, no good thing will God withhold from them. Uh, no good thing that God has promised will be withheld from them. If we just do God's, what he says in faith, you know that God will begin working miracles for us right now. In fact, do you know, brothers and sisters, that this is how the sanitarium was started in California, that in CME, uh, College of Medical Evangelists, Sutherland and McGann, McGann himself took the book Ministry of Healing, and that is how what you call Loma Linda was established when it was a sanitarium. They went out to the community. They were trained in the relief work. McGann led up the relief work in 1901. If you read through the inspiration, you'll find out that Madison started not from what you and I think. They didn't start from building an industry. Madison started first by the relief work. That was the first thing they did, the relief work. Now, you, they might know that man is right there, Joseph Stalin. You know what he started? A revolution. Now, look what this says. The little-known story of the American effort to do what? Relieve starvation in the new Soviet Russia. The first American relief ships arrived in 1921. Russian Revolution was still smoldering, and American relief workers were among the first outsiders to break through the revolution. You know that in a time of revolution, the only person that can come in a city and out of the city are relief workers. So if we start a relief work now, and the revolution starts, do you know that only relief workers can move through a revolution? Did you know that? pass through that. China, same thing. All over the countries, you see all the revolutions. Only relief workers can go in there. That's why they let the American Red Cross in, because you go in with medical missionary skills. You go in with food. You go in with the ability to relieve, and as a result, you can do some work. I'm going to pass through this right now. We'll come back to that. And I'm, pass through this. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to tell you about that fully. I want to get here. Now, do you know that we went to the Revere and Herald, because inspiration says something. You know what inspiration says? Inspiration says, in the future, in volume 9, page 71, it tells us, it says that in the future, that ministry of healing Christ's lessons will be brought back and brought back to the front to finish the work. Did you know that? Great work, little time. I'm going to give it a hand now. In the future, there should be well-planned and persevering efforts made to increase their what? Now, do you know that in 2011, this book, Ministry of Healing, stopped being printed? I was at an ASI meeting, met the persons that were doing it. They said they could not sell Ministry of Healing, so they were just dying in the warehouses. You know why? Because they weren't doing it for its purpose, and I say it respectfully. They talked to them and said, maybe you should revive this work. And Elder Chris and myself, under the divine inspiration, began to work on this. Christ Object Lessons, there is no Christ Object Lessons that has the full book at all in Mega Book today. None. No canvassing program has it. None. Are there any canvassers here today? Are there any canvassers? Any have full Christ object lessons? Doesn't exist. But the prophet says that this is to do it to finish the work. And my brothers and sisters, for the first time in the future, we have that which is going to set everything in motion. And do you know what the prophet says? I'm closing right here. I'm 
closing right here. Let me pass this. We went to Review and Herald. You know what the Review and Herald said? The Review and Herald, we, we gave them an option to do the books first. And the Review and Herald, we told them, if you do these books, it will save you. Did we say that, Brother Chris? We sat in the Review and Herald because it says it could save the publishing house if we brought them back to our purpose. And so we said, we want to give you an opportunity first. And they said, well, we, we don't know if we can do it now. We, we have to print great hope. <laughs> we sat down in the meeting. We sat down with the heads. We, I, we looked at them. We said to them, do you remember Apple? That there was a person who looked at Apple and said, your stock will never be anything. And they took their money out of the stock. And all of a sudden, later on, that stock became multi-billion dollar industry. I said, these books are going to become, become the solution to the world's problem. If you take your stock out now, you will suffer. Where is Review and Herald today? Without a vision, the people perish. But another publishing company picked it up. Remnant Publications. And these books last year, they weren't here. But today, this day is this scripture fulfilled year. It says in the future, not in the future now. We're here. Watch what the prophet says. Now, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have gone this far, but do you know that last year the prophet rebuked me? Christ our blessed ministry of healing. Thousands of transient residents live here. They should be given out. It says, those who bear responsibilities, come on, those who bear responsibilities in our sanitariums should act wisely in this matter, encouraging how many? Oh. Nurses, helpers, students to gather by what? as much as possible of the money required to meet the expense of the different what? Is that what we're doing right now? Why was not someone appointed at what? At your what? Where are we? To present the interest of this line of work to our people in your failure to do this, you lost a precious what? to place large blessings within the reach of the people, and you also lost an opportunity of raising means for the relief of our institutions. My brethren, let us encourage our people to take up this work without further delay. Amen. What shall we do then? I'm not saying, do you believe the prophet? Amen. Why are our people so slow to understand what the Lord would have? You want to know what to do? This is what to do. Our leading workers should prepare beforehand to use the opportunity at our large and small gatherings to present these books where? To our people, number one. Did we do that? Yes or no? And then do what? Call for what? Volunteers who will engage in their sale when this work is entered into without with earnestness, which at the times demand the indebtedness which now rests upon our schools will greatly lessen. And then the people who are, who are now being called upon to give larger of their means of support, these institutions will be free to turn a larger part of the offerings to missionary work and other needed places where special efforts have not yet been done and the call is going out. We have just a limited books here. This book tells us, we have a website set up on these books that tell us exactly how to get these books into the hand. We're getting ready to have a relief rally to organize anyone who wants to understand how to become a problem solver following the principle of these books so that we can give the loud cry, the third angel's message. This is the way from the outpost to the city. We must become relief workers. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but inspiration says that we'll do that work. She says, you want your spell to be broken? She says, do what Jesus is doing. I want to do what he's doing. What do you say? I'm going to stop right here. We'll have the handouts at the end. Those who are very interested, at least one of family that goes through this in detail. And please, we want to sign your name up. Some sign up from the beginning. We're getting ready to go forward. They're already. If you want to start the outpost, we're going to finish this tomorrow. But if you want to start the outpost, you start by getting these books. Inspiration says, you'll find in your handout. She says, everyone that's going to carry these books, they must make a careful study of every chapter and then endeavor to put into practice what they read. She says, it will change their life. She says, young men that are looking for ministry, do this work. She says, you want to start revival in the church? Do this work. You want to see quotations? She says it again and again. She says, you want to reach the world? Do this work. Why are we so slow to understand? Great work, little time. My time is gone. And I'm telling you, your time is gone too. 
It's time. Amen. Let us pray. Truly, Father, the gospel is a wonderful simplifier of life's problems. We learn that from the ministry of healing. And in these books, you present to us the gospel as a solution to the problems in homes, to the problems in schools, to the problems in society, to the problems of health and finances. Indeed, you teach us how to live to solve the very problems of life. But Lord, sometimes it seems so simple that we won't do what you said. This is your plan. And you'll do it by many or by few. Lord, may there be volunteers who will volunteer today to get the book, to purchase one for themselves first, that they can begin the process. And then, Lord, to get some so they can take it to their communities and share it with their co-workers. And they say, what are you doing? They tell them, we're relief workers. We want to solve the problems of life. How are you going to do it? Read the book. And as we learn to do this, Lord, we can start sanitariums and outposts, city missions, treatment rooms, hygienic restaurants. In a few short months, a great work can be accomplished if we just enter into what you told us to do. Lord, we've barely even touched the surface of this, Lord. But may they read the handout and may they come back to our final session tomorrow where we will talk about it just a little bit more. Because the time is now. This is the solution to the revolution the gospel of Jesus Christ we thank you Lord but it doesn't we can't give what we don't have and so I want to pause the prayer there's someone that says Lord I want to begin reading for myself not just to read the pages but I want to live like Jesus I want to be like Jesus and you want that experience tonight just raise your hand wherever you are praise God is it clear tonight father you see the lifted hands Supply the fact, Lord, give us this experience with Jesus that we can follow steps doing the fourfold work that you did to finish the work in your appointed blueprint planning way. We thank you, Lord. Help us, Lord, to set that mystic stone in motion so that eventually, Daniel 2, that stone can come out and destroy that mountain and we can live with you and your kingdom forever. We thank you. In Jesus' name.